Give me a minute. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, brother? How are you doing? Welcome to Collecting Me Gallery. How can we help you today? What's going on? So I want to get a cover up, right? Okay. And um. Whoa! whoa. It's on my leg. Oh! <laughs> Don't even take your pants off. Oh my! Oh my God, dude! It's on my leg. Oh, well, I mean, it looked like you were taking your pants off. I mean, I don't have. What to. is that? Oh my God! What? The, what is that, dude? It's a Mexican Popeye. Um, Oh, Mexican Popeye? <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't eat spinach, he eats beans. Anyways, I Dude, you should totally keep that. I don't know, that's kind of cool. So what do you think about getting, man? What's going on? What are you thinking? Yeah, maybe just something like traditional, like a rose or something like that. Just, just Traditional, huh? Yeah, just something to cover it up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care too much. I just don't want the Popeye. You want to get rid of it? Yeah, that shit's really not doing it for me, man. Right, to be honest. Okay. So whatever but I really, really like the Mexican Popeyes. I don't think you should cover it up, Flair. It's pretty dope. It's just kind of haunting me. The Popeyes so rad, bro. Yeah, it's like haunting me now, man. I can't have that shit. I got you. I got you. Uh, well, traditional rose is cool. I mean, we're gonna have to do like I said, like blue or purple. Um, it's gonna have to be a dark color. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Cool. That's fine. Honestly, I don't care. Whatever it, works. It could be a silhouette for all I care. Well, it's almost not a silhouette. What, a, what about a bag of rice? Rice and beans, baby! I mean, that might work! I don't think that's gonna be like any better than that, dude. I think that's a little sad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could totally do a traditional cover up. We can make that happen. Um, just give me a few minutes to go back there and set up, but you do gotta fill out some paperwork before I go back there. Oh, get started? How much is it gonna be, though? Uh, well, we have an hourly rate, and the hourly rate is on our, on our paperwork. Um, normally, it's between 100 and $200 an hour, you know what I mean? So. Kinda on the budget, like you hook me up a little bit, like hook me up. Hook you up? Man, I just met you, dog! You can be homies though, maybe with, like, you know, you don't know that. Oh man, you want the homie discount? I just barely met you! Yeah, but you can be homies though. Let me yeah, see. You Actually, that. you know what? I can hook you up. What the? You said you wanted to get hooked up, get hooked up man! That's my. I guess he didn't want to get hooked up. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that funny little video we just did for you. We thought that intro would be a little something that you can relate to one-on-one -on, -one on how we go about doing cover-ups here at Collective Ink Gallery. So today's video is going to be about quick tips on cover-ups and how to ask your artist about getting one. Well, you know, being on the show Tattoo Nightmares, oh man, have I seen some horrible tattoos. I've seen them bad from the face to the sides to the backs um, to... Tattoos being done in prisons, to tattoos being done in the backyards, to professional tattoos not being done correctly. I have seen it all in the world of cover-ups. Um, so, I would say, to start off, number one, you're going to have to find an artist that's to your style. Maybe something that you're looking for. It could be traditional, um, it could be realism, it could be surrealism, it could be neo-traditional, whatever it is. You're going to have to first look for the artist that you're thinking about getting that particular style for the cover-up that you're trying to get. Obviously, when searching for an artist that's going to be doing your cover-ups, it does help that he has some sort of referencing of before and after pictures of what he's done. Um, do some research. Do some focusing on the styling. Do the research on the artist. And then also research and see if they do truly have before and after photos of their work. Um, this will help you determine whether you're going to go with his style or maybe someone else's or if he's even possible at doing the cover-up that you're trying to approach the artist with. Um, myself, I get asked many, many times to do many multiple styles of cover-ups with many multiple styles of tattooing. Um, I find it that I just have to be creative when it comes to my clients. Being on Tattoo Nightmares, uh, my fans or our fans have noticed that we do it all, and uh, it's not that I choose to do it all, but I do actually. Uh, let me rephrase that. I do choose to do it all. I ain't gonna lie. I just like drawing. 
I don't really have a particular style that I really want to go towards. I'm not a specialist at this. I'm not a specialist, a specialist at that. Some people might say I am. I don't think so. I truly enjoy drawing every style that I possibly can get away with. Are there some styles that I'm not so good at doing? Yeah, of course there is. And those I probably will pro most likely tell you to go to a different kind of an artist for that. Um, but for the majority of the time, I do take a lot of of clients in that, that have multiple styles and multiple ranges of cover-ups that they want to get. So now that you've found the artist that you like, the style that you want to go for, there's a couple things that you're going to have to do as a client. Um, one is going to be, please get some good photos of your tattoo. And what I mean by that is, try to find some natural lighting, try to find an outside area where there's decent lighting enough to, to show the true color of your tattoos, like to show how dark they are, if it's a tribal piece, if it's a name. We really, as the artist, want to see the, the best natural lighting of that tattoo that we're about to cover up. Uh, number two, I would suggest getting a ruler. Um, there's fabric rulers that they use for like cutting material. They're very flimsy and you can use those by placing them next to the tattoo that you're getting covered up. Um, it helps us to see how big the tattoo is, how many inches, um, where it's going, and it gives us an idea of what we got to work with as far as placement and design layout. It's super, super important that you guys do that. When, uh, when my clients email me, um, we have kind of like a list that we go through for you to do um, before we even take a look at your tattoo. And that's just so that we can kind of break down what's about to happen so that we can say yes or no if it's even possible at doing your tattoo. Keep in mind, most tattoos are possible to cover up. I mean, it takes a pretty good imagination, but they are possible. And a lot of people come to me because they say, Everyone else told me no, Gus. Um, that's why I came here. Sometimes artists send them to me because some of the stuff I begin is pretty gnarly. But anyways, some of those tips are really important. Good photos, using a ruler to measure the size of the tattoo that you have so that we're able to see what we're about to uh, achieve with your cover-up. Um, now, as far as the style of the cover-up that you want to get, does it really matter? Not really. That depends on the artist that you just chose for the cover-up. Hopefully, it's me. Um, but that depends on the style. Again, um, I would suggest honestly getting anywhere from one, not even one, actually two to like four ideas that you can give the artist um, for the cover-up that you want to get. Again, depending on how difficult your cover-up may be, you're going to want to have multiple ideas for the artist so that his mind can somehow try to creatively come up with what's best for your situation or how bad your tattoo may be will determine which one he picks. I mean, sometimes clients come at me and they want some ideas and sometimes, boom, it works right away and sometimes they don't. So to have a couple backup plans on what you're trying to get really, really does help. So good photos, a ruler, and at least up to three ideas for your artist when you send them that email of course, on how to get tattooed by the artist for the cover-up. Uh, those are probably the most important tips I can give you um, before you approach someone um, to get cover-up work done. So what is possible to get covered up with your tattoo? Like, what ideas are possible or even remotely possible for some of these cover-ups that you try to send us? Well, that all determines on you. So, what I mean is don't come at someone like myself with a crazy tribal armband and you want a portrait. Well, actually, it might work depending on the portrait, but be very... Uh, what am I looking for here? Hmm, common sense? If something is too dark, obviously try not to get something that's too light. If something is like a black tribal band and you want a white dove, Obviously, that's not going to work, people. So, please, use common sense when trying to get a cover-up, when you're asking an artist about a cover-up, and your ideas before you even say something to the artist, because you don't want to scare the artist off either. Um, not, not that I'm ever scared of cover-ups. I take it on. I mean, as you see, we do it all at Tattoo Nightmares and here at Collective Ink Gallery. But some artists might get a little turned off just by the idea that you have. So be careful with what you say or how you approach the artist with your ideas. Um, make sure that they are actually going to be able to be possible um, 
when deciding on the art that you want to use for your cover up. Now you might not know better. You might not know if it might work or if it might not. So when you research the artist that you want to get your tattoo done by, see if the style is similar to the drawing or the design that you're thinking about so that it makes it easier when you have that conversation with the artist about covering up your tattoo because then you'll understand that at least you're on somewhat of the same level. Um, so try to get creative with your ideas. All right, that's all I'm saying. Um, and be reasonable. Be very reasonable when it comes to your ideas for cover-ups. Um, that brings me to my next thing is, do you go with color or do you go with black and gray? That is another question I get asked a lot. Well, it, de it depends. It depends. If your cover-up is, I'm going to use a name for example. If the name is too dark, obviously you can use too many transparent colors. In tattooing, a lot of our colors are transparent. They're not opaque. We do have a lot of opaque colors, but um, your skin is not going to adapt to an opaque color um, so well. It's not, it's not a painting. It's not just going to get like buffed over and it's gone. Boom! It doesn't work like that. It takes multiple sessions to do some of them. Um, so that's going to depend on the on whether you go black and gray or color. Again, that's going to go with the artist that you choose and the style that he does. Um, there's a couple of examples where I had a bundle of tattoos and I most definitely had to use color because the color helps me saturate old ink and helps me displace the old ink underneath it with textures that you won't be able to see the old tattoos. Now, there are some of those old cover-ups that are from a long, long time ago that were done correctly or they weren't done correctly, whether they were done in a backyard, in prison, or at a shop. For whatever reason, they just weren't done dark enough or they've just faded out tremendously because the ink back then wasn't so good or whatever the case may be. Now those cover-ups, the good majority of them will work for black and gray. Some of them that are too dark will also work for black and gray depending on how creative the artist can get on manipulating line work. What I mean by that is, is how do you change a circle into a square, right? If you can change a circle into a square, you can become a very good tattoo artist when it comes to cover-ups. And that is a simple explanation. You are able to create the illusion of something from one object to another object and change the way that the viewer is looking at it. You have to be very creative when it comes to these cover-ups in black and gray. You have to create details and structure and composition and lights and even the flow of the tattoo will determine how good you can do the cover-up with black and gray. Again, you have to find someone not only who is willing to do your cover-ups, but also who is creative enough to approach the tattoo so that you end up with a new looking tattoo. So color or black and gray, it's all going to be determined on how bad your tattoo is. Another good question I get asked a lot is, is it going to need more than one session? Well, again, how bad is your tattoo? How many tattoos are you trying to cover up? How dark is it? And where is it? This is going to determine the factor of how many sessions you're going to have. So you can't just like have a black tribal band and all of a sudden it's a, it's a bright, beautiful rose. It just doesn't work that way. Your skin doesn't work that way. You have layers in your skin. The old skin is a, is, is, has the old ink all the way on the bottom and you're trying to put... I'm not going to explain that right now because that's going to take like three hours. Let's just say you're not a canvas where you can just buff something out. Um, it's up to you to determine whether you would like to come back for the second session. After one session cover-ups, I don't know. Are you happy with the cover-up or are you not? That's going to be determined on you. Myself, I always recommend that my clients get two sessions on the cover-ups unless they're very minimal and small that I knew for a fact that I saturated that 100% completely. And when I do that, I let my clients know that they should be okay and they don't need to come back. But for the majority of the time, yes, you do need multiple sessions on cover-ups because you really, really, really do need to saturate new color or black and gray into those old tattoos so that you can saturate the old ink out of there. So with that being said, that is my quick little tips on what you should do when approaching a cover-up, how to approach a cover-up, how to ask an artist about a cover-up. Keep in mind, some artists are going to tell you no. Some artists don't do cover-ups. Some of them don't even care. They don't even want to post them. Or some of them post them and they're cool but they don't tell you their cover-ups. Myself, I obviously do cover-ups because I got this TV show with Jasmine and Tommy and everyone's like, you're the master, you're the master, you're the, I am not. 
the effing master. I just do good tattoos, I think, to a certain degree. I'm not the best at it. Some may say I am, some may say I'm not, but I really enjoy doing cover-ups, and if you need a cover-up, please feel free to email me. I'll put that in my descriptions down below, but that wasn't a self-promoting horrible thing I just did, but I did. BigGusInc at gmail.com because I can do your cover up. But anyways, a couple quick tips on how to get your covers for your artist or what you're looking for or maybe just to give you a brief idea of how to approach an artist for a cover up. Um, I hope they help. I hope you had fun with us. I hope you liked that intro with Felipe running out the door. I was going to cut his arm off but or his leg or whatever it was I was looking at. I don't know what he was doing, but it was a lot funny. Till next time, keep watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more, go to my YouTube channel. Peace.